Welcome to this next installment uh, where we'll cover some sweeping skills. I want to start off with an example of one way to model something. Let's say that I want to extrude a cylinder and slowly use revolves to make that into, say, an S shape. Well, I'll start off by going onto the front plane. So I make a circle. And I can give it an arbitrary 0.5 and let's extrude. Let's say features, extrude, let's go six inches and I'll reverse the direction. Now uh, I can highlight this surface. Now this is kind of cool. I can go to the sketch menu and push sketch and I want to draw a circle that would be equal. You know, right there. Um, and then I could give it a dimension half an inch like I always do but there's a shortcut and this is as good a time as, that, as any to talk about it while I'm sketching on this plane I can highlight anything even I can even highlight this point if I wanted to but I can highlight anything that is the shape that I want and instead of sketching it out, if it already exists, I can just push convert entities and it automatically makes a sketch on the plane. So notice I had this highlighted over here and it projected that circle right on the plane and made it into a sketch. So convert entities is your best friend because you can click even this side and say convert entities. So that is really handy going forward. So I'll push control A and get normal here. Then I'll make a center line. What the heck? And I'll give that half an inch and notice I don't have to constrain the edges because it's a center line so it says my sketch is fully defined already. I can push control 7 and I can do a revolve just like we learned in the last video and I can say 90 degrees and go the other direction and then I can convert entities I can extrude, and let's say I go one inch this time, and then I can convert entities. And make a sketch. and I can revolve. Ninety degrees, other direction. There we go. And I can sketch, convert entities, extrude, and go another six inches. Oh, for that I'll probably have to go five inches and I'll fast forward the rest so here I've made this funky S shape out of a series of extrusions and revolves. Is there an easier way to do this? Of course there is. So after conveniently reviewing uh, extrusions and revolves, in case you wanted a second glance at those, 
I want to tell you how to do a sweep, which is a lot less work than this. Let me open up a new part. And from here, just as before, I'll choose the front plane to sketch on, make a circle, same dimension of half an inch. Now, instead of doing anything that would add material, like extruding, I'll just rebuild to exit the sketch, and then I'll choose the top plane. Notice the top plane collides with my circle. In other words, my circle is sitting in my top plane, and the very center of the circle is in that plane. That is exactly what we want to do a good sweep. So I choose a plane that intersects with the sketch that I want to sweep, and I choose sketch. Now I can control 8 and I'll make a sketch. I'll make a similar sketch to what I made before. And I'll give it some dimensions. First off, our initial extrusion was 6 inches long. This was 1 inch. This was also 6 inches long, which we have a relation that snaps it to the origin. So I can go and make this 1 inch and 6 inches. And from here, we had, if I add in a sketch fillet on these edges, and I can make that radius quarter inch. And there's a path similar to what we had in the model that we just created. Now I can rebuild, and I say Features, and there's the button for a sweep. It says Swept Boss Base. I click on that, and it gives me some options here. It says right here what is the profile that you want, and I say I want this profile. And this next box is automatically highlighted, and it says what path. And so I choose this profile along this path, and I hit the green check and we've made a sweep in SolidWorks remarkably like the one that we just made. I chose a different radius so it looks a little bit different but you can make an identical part to the one that we just made in a sweep and it is a lot less work and sometimes it's the only thing that will work. So there are some limitations. First off, if I go to edit the sketch the sweep in the history tree has two sketches. The first one is your profile, the second one is your path. If I get rid of these radii, and I set these to be intersecting, You will notice that when I redo the sweep by hitting the rebuild button, it indeed can handle 90 degrees. But if I go edit my sketch, make some sketch fillets, so we saw that it can handle a quarter inch radius and it can handle no radius or 90 degrees. If I make this 0 0.125 or an eighth inch radius and rebuild, I get an error. What is happening? What's going on is this profile is too large to be drawn over this small radius, so it can't compute. If I up this radius to say 0 0.49 and resweep it, the error is corrected. So that is something to keep in mind when we do this. Uh, your radius has to be at least half of the diameter of the circle that you're sweeping. But 
it's not just limited to circles. I can edit this sketch and I can say Hey, SolidWorks, why don't you give me a hexagon? And I can dimension this. And rebuild. And notice I've got a hexagon that I've swept. So sweep is very powerful. It can take a lot of different input parameters. Finally, I can make a twist as I sweep. So if I specify a twist of 360 degrees, I can have a twisting profile going all through the swept path. So this is another uh, skill to have on your tool belt when you do SolidWorks. Sweeps can make your life a lot easier. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video.